Join me in Revision Surgery Suite as I walk through a few of my surgical cases. By combining advanced technology with my skills as a fellowship trained cornea specialist, I am able to improve patients' vision and quality of life. Helping people achieve their best vision is definitely rewarding and absolutely life-changing. So everybody going through cataract surgery today needs to understand that they have options. And these options are personal. It's up to the patient. But the onus is on us to make sure they're properly educated. So with specialty lasers and specialty lenses, we're able to not just replace a cloudy lens, which is what cataract surgery is, but we're able to correct the focusing defects of the eye as well, including astigmatism. So a toric lens is an intraocular lens that corrects astigmatism. And astigmatism, interestingly, is a vector. And a vector is a mathematical term. A vector has a magnitude and a direction. And so toric lenses have to be seated correctly. And we go through painstaking measurements to determine the placement of the toric lens. And then during the surgery, you're going to see how this toric lens is positioned inside of the eye to affect the best visual outcome. Viewer discretion advised. This video shows live footage from an actual surgical procedure. So we use a femtosecond laser for cataract surgery to help us with some specific fine details that we typically do by hand. So first of all, the laser is so precise, we have to dock the eye to it. So here you're seeing the docking take place. On the left is a video going right down the laser. On the right is called an OCT for optical coherence tomography. And it's basically a cross section through the front of the eye. Once the eye is docked, an edge detection from the software occurs along the pupillary margin and then the anterior capsule of the lens and the posterior capsule of the lens. The laser does basically three to four things for us during cataract surgery. The first thing you're witnessing now is called capsulorexis and it's the opening into the front of the lens and the laser does it perfectly. Then the next step is lens fragmentation. So you're gonna see in the right-hand video, starting deep in the lens, and you'll see it move anterior, is fragmentation of the cataract ex itself. So it's, it's as if it's, it's fragmenting it into slices of a pie. And the last piece is we make some of our corneal incisions either a limbal relaxing incision for astigmatism and one of my stab incisions for a secondary instrument. So we readjust the patient's docking and we make these tiny microscopic incisions in the cornea that help us enter the eye for cataract surgery. Okay, what you see here is the beginning of a cataract surgery after the femtosecond laser has done the opening into the lens and lens fragmentation. So what I'm doing is I'm putting in a viscoelastic, which is a clear gel that expands the anterior chamber of the eye and it allows more room for me to work. I'm injecting an anesthetic here which separates the capsule of the lens from the surrounding cortex. And I'm doing this several times because I want the lens material to be rotating into the capsular bag, just as you saw there, the lens was rotating. So next comes phacoemulsification. So phacoemulsification has three properties. It has inflow of fluid to keep the eye expanded. It has vacuum through that center uh, aperture. And it has ultrasonic um, energy 
that literally liquefies the lens. So you can see uh, that the laser, the femtosecond laser has already fragmented the lens into like slices of a pie. And I'm using a second instrument to manipulate these pieces so that the phaco emulsification can literally chew them up and remove them from uh, the eye. So I'm switching instruments here because there's residual fine cortical material on the inside of the capsule. Remember that the capsule is conserved from the surrounding, uh, it, it's the outer covering of the cataract because that becomes the supportive structure for the new synthetic lens. So I'm injecting a viscoelastic material again, this time expanding the capsule, and our intraocular lens is folded over like a taco. It slips through a tiny microscopic clear corneal incision, and these lenses have a memory to them. And so the arms here are called haptics. They're centering devices and they keep the uh, intraocular lens stable once it's seated inside of the eye. And if you notice that the base of those arms, there's three dots. And this is where the alignment takes place that corrects the astigmatism. So, I have a device that we're going to overlay onto the surgical field. I am operating on a 3D platform heads up and I'm overlaying a topographic map of the front of this patient's eye that was taken preoperatively. And we're overlaying it, making sure the alignment is correct and then this overlay is going to drive the position of the placement of this lens, a toric lens, that corrects astigmatism. So once I'm sure the alignment is correct, the computer draws a line and now I have to connect the dots to the line. So you can see the tiny, tiny dots that are at the base of the haptics or those are those centering arms and they're lined up with the green line and that assures me that the astigmatism correction will be correct and so i'm just securing uh, these clear corneal microscopic incisions i'm just making sure they're watertight and that the lens is centered correctly just doing a little irrigation of fluid, making sure that the wounds are uh, watertight. And this procedure went beautifully. And then at the end, we're putting in medicine, this opaque medicine inside the eye and just under the conjunctiva. And that's so the patient does not need any eye drops afterwards.